Hello, and this is the starting video for this channel. If you need to understand the basic concepts for nothing, this is the channel. I have been creating something that has very unique things and potentials in the game that I think need to be explored further, and I have been single-handedly developing this, at least to my knowledge. The basic concept is recoil tech. Recoil changes when the gun auto-aims. You By using methods to detect in which ways the recoil changes, you can then use that in a useful way, such as missiles, autonomous craft, radars, so on and so forth. I have already made many such things, and this is what this video will cover. So there is exactly one thing that changes when a gun is shooting and auto-aiming. When it finds a target and aims in that direction, the recoil changes equally. So what this means is that if you have a rotating stick and you place a gun on it with maximum auto-aim and leave it to fire, if there is no target, it'll just freely rotate, but if there is a target, and the gun is positioned correctly, then it will lock onto and keep the stick in line with the target. The exact positions are quite simple. As a rule of thumb, you can stack multiple as long as they're symmetrical. To lock onto something, the gun needs to be behind the point that it rotates around. So if you so if it's just free floating, that'd be the center of mass or whatever zero strength servo you have a rotating on. Behind that, that's where the gun should be. But this also means that you can use that to your advantage and by placing it the wrong way around, you can get it to, if there's something behind it, to rotate the other way to line up the nose of it. I shall henceforth be referring to it as a plane since that's easier to describe the nose, the tail, so on and so forth. And just like a plane, you oftentimes have to balance multiple forces. The guns are like a drag. They should always be focused on the tail, otherwise it becomes unstable. As long as the guns are shooting from the tail compared to the pivot point, plane equivalent would be center of mass, then it should be able to hold a stable lock. There's also ways to get locks from the side, which is less effective, but still possible. And similar things apply to expanding and adding more and more guns. In most of my designs, you'll see I only have a pair of guns one in the back and another one in the front to act as a perfectly symmetrical counterweight. The act It does not matter how many guns you have as long as you have a proportional amount of dampening. I will get into dampening in just a moment. You can have as many guns and whatever type of guns as long as they have recoil, so this means none of the blasters or EMPs, but I highly, highly recommend to stick to the basic smart cannon because one, it has the largest auto aim, making it the easiest to work with and the best to work. And two, it's the cheapest and smallest. There's no point to get more expensive. So let's say that you do build this, the basic concept of a stick with a gun around rotating around a point. It's not gonna work. You're missing one more critical piece, the dampening. You need something to slow it down. You need something to stop the gun from overcorrecting. In atmosphere, this could be drag. However, drag has some issues. One, with the space bound now finally being out, there is the issue of different atmospheres. 
and needing to make it tunable for different atmospheres. But most people aren't going to be using these on planets anyway, so eh. But then also, drag scales with speed. The faster you go, the more drag there is. So naturally, it, you can only tune it for a specific amount of speed. You can get it pretty generally, but usually you can only tune it for a single speed. And you have to account for that when using the vehicle with this thing mounted on. We're going to get to uses of it later. That's one option for dampening. Another more recent and arguably more effective option is the gyroscopes. They're very useful because they can dampen a rotation. This has really no problems except for the fact that you can't go lower than 0 0.1 power on the gyroscopes and on really small radars that can often lead to too much dampening where they undercorrect and they are not responsive enough. So you need to balance this dampening, this vertical, this the, on a plane, this would be the equivalent of a vertical stabilizer. You need to balance it and make it just big enough so that it can still turn effectively, but not too much and not too little. And that's really the core concept of the entire systems. That's it. Following this, you can expand upon it significantly but if you can understand that, you can understand everything else in this video. If you don't understand that, I recommend re-watching it, or perhaps downloading some of my previous creations from my previous videos, which I will be referencing as examples, and all of them are on the Steam Workshop. However, I would also like to note that it is very likely that some of them no longer work, as the space bound update reduced the recoil of the of most of the bullet firing weapons. Now, for the other thing that people have been asking me for, how do I make a radar? The more recent thing, more the more recent development that I've been making, um, and that can be seen in more recent videos. The concept itself here is also simple. Use it, so I have been avoiding using radars because they have one fatal flaw. The entire reason that I have been originally attempting to just connect the guns directly to the creation and to simply add enough guns to so that the creation can turn itself is because sensors can only process binary stuff. Basically, it's either turning or it's not turning. This is bad. Also, it adds a whole bunch of complexity and weight. In, I believe, my second video, I make an autonomous naval killbot drone type of thing. Basically, it has four guns on the very back of it, four pontoons and two propellers to push it forward. That's it. If there's something in front of it, it turns towards it and keeps going forward. It's constantly shooting and it'll try to trail something. Obviously, probably a boat since it's in the water. But the problem is, if you just use the raw guns, especially now, the amount of recoil is tiny and guns weigh a lot. I was only able to get it working in the water because the water could support it. However, in practice, it's very hard. My end goal is air-to-air -air missiles, and I'm getting closer and closer, but there are issues. And so I had to sacrifice the precision of, instead of going, it's going that way, or it's not going that way, of sensors, I had to switch to sensors, I'm explaining it terribly, basically 
Sensor is bad because sensors only say yes turning or no turning. I had to switch to sensors because sensors allow me to hook up the response of the thing into actual thrusters and ailerons, and tails, and things that can actually apply a decent amount of force without adding too much ridiculous weight. And so I started testing radars. The initial ones were very, very bad. However, they got better. By far, the biggest improvement was figuring out two things. One, from a sensor, there is exactly a single ray cast that detects stuff. It comes from only the center of one side of it. The sensor block is a one by one by two area. It takes up a one by one by two area. The ray originates from only one half of it. The entire sensor does not detect, which is critical when you're talking about the types of precision that I need. Early models did not account for this. They would often be lopsided in their detection and continuously drift to one side or be more sensitive on one side compared to the other. After I figured that out, it got significantly more precise, but still pretty inaccurate. After all, I couldn't tune, it, tune the sensors to be right next to the gun. So how? How do I make it more precise? Well, I move the sensors. By connecting the, the front sensors to a hinge, I can move it exactly to the location I want. I got it so precise that the current versions, if I put them at the edge of at the edge of the space bound map, they can actually detect the floating point errors when I move. You don't need to understand what that means. Basically, I got it incredibly precise. For the terminology, there are a couple main parts of a radar. From, from here on out, I'll refer to the actual radar as well, the radar. But the upper part that's on the rotating bit as the disc and the base of it as the base. You can have the sensors on either the disc or the base. It does not matter. However, on the opposite thing to the sensors, you must have a bump. This can be any block, but it must be detectable by sensors because that is what the sensors are going to zero in on. That's what they're going to be tuned around. So when one, when the base turns relative to the disc or the disc turns relative to the base and they miss a line, the sensors should be able to detect that because the bump is moved and they should be able to detect that. It may not be able to tell you exactly how much as with the recoil, but that should be enough if you tune it precisely enough to be perfectly in line and to respond with that. Some of this type of thinking and this usage of these systems can be first seen in my NKBs, Naval Killbots. Um, and they are exactly what they sound like. Fully autonomous, fully combat ready systems that can be spawned in and then they go in a straight line until they find a target at which point they have a very, very large radar, almost 360 degrees. They can see behind them even and in front of them and to the sides, but they have like 15 degree gaps in the corners and it'll try to go to it and shoot it. I feel like now would be a good time to talk about practical applications. So my end goal is air to air missiles. Obviously, that's what I've been saying this entire time. 
Um, but I feel like the first practical use of them that I made was auto turrets. This was before radars, before tuning sensors, before all of that. That was just the initial concept of, hey, why not give auto-aim a 360 degree ability to track something 360 degrees around the vehicle? It's a simple concept. And it worked. Stick, servo with zero force, gun on the back. It tracked beautifully. This can be seen in some of my first videos, the first one or two ones. I later evolved this to add miniguns, more, more responsive. And I feel like this is where I noticed a couple, started noticing a couple things, which will be important if you want to build your own systems. One, friction is an option for dampening, but only if you do it in a very precise way. The problem is that something such as a servo has no dampening. If you turn up the strength, it won't dampen it. It'll apply an equal strength with no reduction. It'll snap it back into the forwards position. That means if you push it to the side, it'll apply an equal force to push it back. And that also, by nature, means that it'll overcorrect since it didn't reduce it. Whatever caused it to snap out, that was more force than it needed to go back. So when it applies a counter force, going to apply way too much force again. So using servos with any amount of force for dampening, big no-no. However, if you're making like a tiny, small craft, like a ground torpedo, just having, just having it slide along the ground and having the ground itself be acted, act as the friction to reduce the spinning, and act as the dampening, that's okay. Basically, as long as what you're connected to is solid and your connection does not have any issues like the servo, it will work fine. You just need to be careful with that. And the second thing, there is this issue which I believe to be physics. It started happening pretty early on, but I wasn't sure what it was. For some reason, when you go at high speeds, even when something is perfectly symmetrical, so that there is the aerodynamics are perfectly symmetrical, even when in space, when it's pivoting around a point, zero drag because it's in the vacuum of space, perfectly balanced, for some reason, when you go at a high speed and start turning, it'll spin out. Even when there's a gyroscope at what should be plenty force, for some reason, it still spins out. I do not know why. I do not know how to stop it. All I can say is, sometimes when I put more, it's not a creation thing, because sometimes when I put multiple radars on a single creation, some of them work fine, but some of them don't. My, yeah, I have no guesses about it. My one recommendation is just be careful, I guess. And I've talked a lot about symmetry and I noticed that I didn't talk much about it. It doesn't per se have to be symmetrical. If you look at some of my earlier auto turret models from my earlier videos, which I do recommend checking out many of my earlier videos, you'll notice that they weren't perfectly symmetrical. Sometimes that's just impractical. Too much weight, too much stuff. But the problem is, when I build up speed and suddenly turn or suddenly stop, that can sometimes spin around the turret, make it lose its lock. And this applies to whenever there's any other forces in general. So when you're making just the radars, it's usually just better for all purposes to make a singular, solid, smaller, perfectly symmetrical radar. And that's the core concepts and 
stuff in general of the radar. There's not much else to say. Some of the more recent developments, which I should mention, I tried to continue. So currently my latest stuff was making missiles in space. Failed because of the mysterious spinning out of stuff. For some reason it happens more often on the radar on the nose of the missile, which is farther from the center of mass. I'm thinking it might be a center of mass issue. No, it doesn't seem like it. That wouldn't, that wouldn't align with my uh, GKB from an earlier video. Wouldn't exactly align with the gun's firing or not firing, because it happens equally when it both. So, don't know. Anyway, third one is a fail. Um, I also tried to use a different dampening design to reduce the dampening and be able to more precisely tune it. I did remove the servo from the earlier missile versions because that was causing issues, but that wasn't the source of the spinning out. It was the source of the oscillations after the spinning out, the, the back and forth motion, but it was not the source of it spinning out in the first place. However, um, in my free time, I did end up making something which was more practical and something else that wasn't a missile, but was more practical and something that I could share with you guys. It's a combination of a functional radar, which can look only along one axis. Adding another one would add like another radar, like another sensor array. And I already use five. So it's a radar and it's a rangefinder. The range finding is a little bit iffy. It doesn't quite work. Basically, as I'm sure you can see right now, I made multiple models that each did stuff slightly differently. Each was an enhancement of the last version. I'm probably gonna stop here with it, but this current version can estimate the distance quite well. But the problem is it doesn't account for the distance. It accounts for how many degrees the two radars on the side have to turn inwards to, to line up on the target. What this means is if they turn like a little, so it's not perfectly linear, is what I'm saying. I, If you turn one in a triangle, right triangle, if you have the angle at the base turn one degree, when it's from zero to zero, it'll move. God, okay, I can't explain it. Basically, it's bad. It doesn't fully work. It gives you a rough estimate. I can probably make an analog computer, which is basically what this entire thing is, that can account for that but I'm lazy and I'm moving on to the next project, done. Channel update, why the hell do I have 52 subscribers? Um, yeah, that, that's really it. That, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired right now. I hope that video covered most of the recoil tech as I tend to be calling it and the radar systems and I hope it was comprehensible. That's about it.